This is the Playdate. It's a handheld console that came out about a year ago and it has a one bit screen with a crank on the side that you can use as an input device. However, what I think is the most special thing about the device is that anyone can make games for it. In this video, I'll go over what making games is like for the Playdate and also how to set up a Playdate development environment on Windows. This is an update to my video that I put out previously called Getting Started with the Playdate SDK, since the setup process in that video is slightly outdated. There are two main ways that you can make a game for the Playdate. The first is by using something called Pulp. Pulp is a web-based game making tool designed to be a more simplified, user-friendly game making experience where you can make games with little to no code. There's a built-in level editor and it uses its own custom scripting language called PulpScript. If you're completely new to development, it's a fun way to dip your toes into game dev. Even though it's more restrictive, the limit is still your imagination with Pulp. For example, I've been able to make a sort of 2D Minecraft game in Pulp and there are a lot of other devs constantly pushing the boundaries of what Pulp is capable of. If you're interested in learning more about Pulp, I have a few videos covering the topic on my channel, but that's not what we're gonna be looking at today. The other way to make games for the Playdate is by using something called the Playdate SDK. SDK stands for Software Development Kit, and you can think of it like a game development framework. This is different from game engines you might be familiar with. Game engines like Unity or Godot have a nice visual interface that allows you to see what you're working on and a bunch of components and features that make development easier. Instead, the SDK is more similar to frameworks like Pygame or Love2D, which are essentially a set of functions that you can use to make a game, but everything happens in code with no visual interface. It takes some time getting used to this style of development, but you have a lot of flexibility. And luckily, the documentation for the SDK is pretty good. With the SDK, you have the choice between two different programming languages, Lua and C. In most cases, I would recommend Lua since it's easier to work with, but since the processor in the Playdate is not the most powerful, you might hit some performance issues if your game is really performance intensive. However, I would say for most games, that would not be an issue. We're gonna be setting up a Lua development environment today. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and set up the development environment so we can start making some games. You'll first want to download the SDK. To do that, we can head over to play.date slash dev, accept the terms of the license agreement, and download the SDK installer. There's something I want to point out about the license agreement real quick. I know you normally just skip these, but there's a helpful summary at the top and two interesting things to know. The first one is from points number three and four. The programs you develop are yours, and you can distribute them in any way. The consequence of this is that you can sell your games, and Panic does not take a cut. I and most other Playdate developers sell our games on itch.io. You can see a bunch of games made by developers in the community under the Playdate tag. So that's a fun thing you can do if you want to pursue that. And the second one is point number seven, which is don't use the name Playdate in the name of your thing. So that means you can't put Playdate in the name of your game. Something to keep in mind. With the SDK installer downloaded, just open the exe and click install. Once it's done, just go ahead and click finish. If you head over to where the SDK was installed, which by default is in your documents folder under Playdate SDK, you'll see a bunch of different files. I wanna point out a couple of interesting ones. There's an HTML file called Inside Playdate, which is the documentation for the SDK. This is basically the Bible for Playdate development. I would highly recommend at the very minimum skimming through the documentation to see what's possible and made available, and if possible, reading through the whole thing, though it's a little lengthy. There's another file called Designing for the Playdate. This is a useful document about best practices for designing a Playdate game, which is important because of how small the screen is and how it's one bit. This one is a quick read, so I recommend just taking the time to go through it. Both of these pages can be found on the Playdate dev website as well. Next is this CoreLibs folder. This has some of the source code used for the SDK. While it doesn't have everything, it's sometimes helpful to take a peek behind the curtain to figure out how something works. Last thing I wanna point out is this examples folder. There's a bunch of different example projects that you can take a look at. However, they're all source code, so it's not a Playdate executable that you can run. To do that, you need to compile the source code. I'll show you how to do that now, but you don't have to follow these steps quite yet since the process is a little involved and I'll show you a way to do this automatically in a bit. But I'll go through it manually first, just in case you're having some issues with the automatic method and you can come back to this portion and reference this part. In order to compile the source code, we're going to need this PDC executable in the bin folder. To make the PDC command accessible everywhere, we can add this to our path in our environment variables. To do that, first start off by copying the path to this bin folder. Next, you can search up environment in the Windows search bar and go ahead and click on edit the system environment variables. On the panel that opens up, click environment variables in the bottom right. Then under the box titled system variables, click on the row that says path and click the edit button in the bottom right. Then click the new button and paste the path to the bin folder. 
You can press OK on this window, but we're not quite done yet with the environment variables. Go back and copy the path to the Playdate SDK folder, the parent folder to the bin, and return to the environment variables. This time, click the new button here on the bottom, and for the variable name, we'll put Playdate SDK path, all caps and separated by underscores. And for the value, we'll paste in that path. Then you can click OK on all the windows. Remember, we'll be doing these automatically in a bit, so don't worry about following these steps for now. To compile a project, we can hop back over to the examples folder. I'll use this Asteroids project as an example. Go into the folder and right click to open up the context menu and click open in terminal. It might also say open in command window here or something similar as well. If that doesn't work, you can copy the path to the folder, search for command prompt, type CD, print the copied path and press enter. To confirm that the environment variables were set up properly, you can type PDC into the command line and press enter. It should show something like this. If it says PDC is not recognized, then the environment variables pointing to the bin folder was not set properly in the path. If there's another error that says something like no such file, then the Playdate SDK path wasn't set properly. We can then compile the project by typing PDC, the name of the folder containing the source code, which in this case is just source, and lastly, the name of what the executable should be, which I'll just put as the name of the project. If everything is done correctly, what you should have is a .pdx folder, which is the project executable. To run this, we can use the simulator app, which should have been installed alongside the SDK. You can search simulator in the search bar or find it in the bin folder. With the simulator open, you can drag and drop the folder onto the application and it should run for you. During development, you're mainly going to be using the simulator to test your code. This means that you can actually make games with a playdate without a playdate, which is pretty nice. However, keep in mind that the performance on the simulator is much, much faster than the device. So the performance on the simulator is not representative of what's possible on device. Another consequence of the simulator is that you can actually play Playdate games for free without owning a Playdate. Games are distributed as PDX files, so you can just drag and drop them into the simulator to play. Now, as I mentioned before, this process is a little tedious and it gets especially so when you're actually coding a project and you have to manually build and run the game every time you make a change. Let's set up a development environment to do this automatically for us instead. First thing we're going to need is a place to write the code. You can use any text editor you like, but I recommend Visual Studio Code. VS Code is free, lightweight, and specially designed for writing code. First, go to code.visualstudio.com and install Visual Studio Code. Next, we'll be setting up a project template to make development easier. This template can be found on this GitHub page linked in the description. Go ahead and click Code and download Zip. After you've extracted the zip file, you can rename the folder to whatever you like and start off by opening this add and variable command. This just automatically sets the environment variables instead of having to manually do it like earlier. If you get this Windows protected your PC pop-up, click more info and then run anyway. Allow the app to make changes to your device and after it's a success, go ahead and close the window. Next, right click the build and run simulator PS1 file, go down to properties and check to see if the script is blocked. If it is, check this unblock checkbox and press OK. If it's not there, then it probably means it's already unblocked. This is a PowerShell script that just enables automatically opening and closing the Playdate Simulator application. One last thing that we need to set, which is setting the execution policy. We need to set it to a remote sign so you can run the PowerShell script from VS Code without admin rights. Look up PowerShell in the search bar and open it. Then go to the GitHub page for the template and copy the set execution policy command and paste it into PowerShell. Press enter, and then when you're prompted, type Y and press enter again. After that's finished, you can close the window. We can then open our project by right-clicking and opening the context menu and clicking open with code. If that's not there, you can also open VS Code directly by searching up Visual Studio Code, clicking file, open folder, and navigating to that folder. Double check that you're not in the source folder, but rather the parent to that folder. This is because you wanna make sure that you have this .vs code folder available at the root level. In the bottom right corner, there should be a pop-up to install recommended extensions. Go ahead and do that. If that doesn't show up, you can manually do it by clicking on the extensions tab, searching for Lua extension, installing that, and also the Lua plus extension and installing that as well. These extensions aren't required, but they add a bunch of features to help with development. You should now be able to automatically build and run the project by going to terminal and then clicking run build task, or you can use the keyboard shortcut control shift B. If everything works correctly, the Playdate Simulator app will open automatically and you should get this showing up. If you're getting an error about PDC not being recognized, you might need to check your environment variables to see if they're set up properly. The path might not be correct, so just double check them and manually fix the path if it's not correct. If you had to change your environment variables, make sure to close VS Code and relaunch it as well. 
Now that we got this set up, let me go over how to structure your project and how the SDK works. We can go ahead and delete every file that is in the main.lua file in the source folder. After that, you can also delete everything in the main.lua file. The main file is where everything runs and is the only file that is required. If you have other files in your project, you can use the import statement to import another file. This is different from standard Lua, which uses require. In the main file, you need to add one function called the update function. We can do that by typing function playdate.update with two parentheses and closing the statement with end. This update function is required because it's at the heart of every playdate game. This function is run automatically before every frame is drawn on screen. By default, the playdate runs at 30 frames per second, so the update function gets called around 30 times a second. You can use this to pull for user input, run game logic, and draw things to the screen. Let's set up a quick demo where you can move around a circle on the screen to see how this all works. Like mentioned before, if you have other files, you can use the import keyword to import the files. But you can also import something called core libraries. If you take a look at the SDK documentation, you'll see that there are a lot of different features like graphics for drawing to the screen, timers to handle things like countdown or animations, different UI components, etc. Many times these features will be contained in a core library that you'll have to import before you can use them. In this example, we'll be drawing a circle to the screen, so we'll need to import the graphics library. Let's go ahead and create a few local variables to keep track of information about this demo. Variables are just a way to name and store data. First, we'll store an X and Y position to player X and player Y. The screen has a size by 400 by 240 pixels, so to put the circle in the center, we'll set the X and Y to 200 and 120, respectively. Next, we'll create another variable to store the radius of the circle. I'll set it to 10. Lastly, we'll use the graphics library to draw a filled circle using the fill circle at point function. We can do that by writing playdate.graphics.fillCircle at point. This function takes in three arguments. The first two are the X and Y position of the center of the circle, and the last one is the radius, so we can just pass in our variables. Notice that we're reusing the playdate variable. Since the playdate variable is commonly used, best practice is to create a local shorthand instead to make things easier to type and to give a slight performance benefit. We'll call the variable PD. The graphics library is used pretty often too, so we'll create a shorthand for this as well, called GFX. We can go ahead and replace our references with these shorthands. If you build and run this, it should just display a circle in the middle of the screen. Next, let's get it to move around with some player input. Since it's for the play date, we might as well try doing it based on the crank position. We'll be using some math here, but don't worry too much about understanding it. I just want to show you a demo of how things can update on the screen. We can get the angle of the crank using the get crank position function and store it into a local variable. Since this function returns the angle in degrees, we'll need to convert this to radians using math.rad. Then we can adjust the player x position by adding the sine of the angle, and adjust the y position by subtracting the cosine of the angle. The math works out this way because when the crank is pointing straight up, the angle is zero, and the coordinate system increases down and to the right, like in most other game engines and frameworks. This will be quite slow, so we can create a player speed variable, which I'll set to three, and we'll multiply these two statements by the player speed. Lastly, the screen needs to be cleared so that there's no smearing, so we'll call gfx.clear at the top of the update loop. If we build and run this, you should be able to use a crank input to control the movement of the circle. If you want to upload this onto your playdate, make sure to first connect the playdate to your computer via USB cable, then unlock the playdate and click device and upload game on device. In about 15 seconds, you should have the demo uploaded and playable on the playdate. It's that simple. Finally, let's talk about next steps. If you're a complete beginner to programming and you're totally lost when I mention things like variables and functions, you should check out my two-part series where I teach you all the basics about programming, specifically in Lua. Those videos should also serve as a good overview on the quirks of the Lua programming language if you have experienced programming but not for Lua specifically. The videos are called Learn to Program for Playdate Game Dev Part 1 and 2. I have a playlist on my channel called Playdate SDK Development Tutorials, and it should be the first two videos. These videos are a little bit more high level, so if you want to go into more depth with the topic, I wrote a short book called The Beginner's Guide to Lua for Game Development that covers these topics in more detail. If you're familiar with programming but want to learn more about specific systems in the Playdate SDK, I have several videos about that that cover various systems like collisions, object-oriented programming, and sprites. The sprite system in the SDK is very useful and commonly used, so I would recommend at least looking into that one. If you're looking to find how to structure your game, I have a few videos on that topic as well. This video, How to Make a Simple Playdate Game, walks you through making a very simple Space Invaders-like game. This other video, Creating a Scene Manager for the Playdate, 
walks you through how to create scenes, which is a common game concept. I've also made a complete tutorial on how to make a Metroidvania slash platformer type game as well. If you're interested in seeing the game architecture for existing games, I made a video called How I Made My Playday Game, walking through how I structured one of my games, Escape from Complex 32. I made a few different games, so if you're interested in seeing how any of those games are made, the source code is available to my Patreon supporters. If you have any specific questions, some great places to be are either my Discord server or the Playdate Squad Discord server, where a lot of the community is. Subscribe to catch more Playdate content, and see you next time.